Today I'm working on a 24 inch by 12 inch board. Particle board with canvas glued to the particle board with PVA glue. And over here I have a brand new palette. This is a palette pad. It's a pad with pages, non-porous pages, and you tear them off and throw them away and use the one underneath. So we have a collection of colours here. White, crimson, Indian yellow, Prussian blue, cobalt blue, burnt umber, warm yellow and burnt sienna. The Indian yellow might be Australian sienna or Australian red gold or something like that. But if you can't find one of those colours, just use the warm yellow. I start by picking up the Indian yellow with my flat hog bristle brush. And because this is a sunset, I'll start low on the board, right across here. The reason why I'm putting it on low is because we want our nice bright colour here. And if we work on the top down, our brush gets dirty. So let's work with a clean brush. And straight over the top of that, I'll start working with my white. My white's thinned out a little bit. Now I just put that on with a couple of brush strokes. Don't brush it backwards and forwards. Just put it on till the canvas is covered and leave it. It'll pick up the gold, the Australian Sienna or the gold, and another one. More white, there's more white than yellow there. Much more. So I'm putting the white over the yellow and the yellow shows through. That's an Indian yellow or it could be Australian Sienna. Then we'll come up with the Indian yellow again. Try and keep the horizontal brush stroke, but if you go up and down a little bit, it doesn't matter, but not too much. Keep it horizontal. I'm working right in the middle of the picture now, and you'll notice this color seems to have two colors. It seems to be a gold and a yellow. That's the beauty of using this Indian yellow type color. Paint it on quickly. Backwards and forwards brush stroke, keep away from the white and keep adding bits of white here and there. Have a little bit of character in the sky. I'll bring it in like that and that'll give us a few clouds in the sunset. That's a two inch flat nylon brush I found. Let's try it, it looks very good. You can get this sunlight effect happening up through the clouds if you're careful. Clean the brush down here. It's a very soft brush. Now you just touch it on there. And it doesn't matter whether you're painting in oils or acrylics. You do exactly the same. Get that sun glaring through there a bit. Well, if you get it wrong, it doesn't matter. Paint over the top. There's nothing wrong with scraping it off and doing it again. Okay, now into it with the Indian yellow again. Bring it in this side. I'll finish this side off over here. I'm using a lot of Indian yellow there. And I'm going to tone it down so it's not so bright. I add a bit of crimson into it because it's getting a little bit too bright. I do want a bit of sunlight on the horizon right across about there but not too much here we need the bright in the middle of the picture so let's have something happen in here the clouds as long as you keep this brush stroke not up and down not here a few dark spots and then if you game try and put a few bits of cloud happening here give it a little bit of character Now we're speed painting, so we'll get the paint on very quickly. The idea is, these paintings are very simple to do, so put them on quickly. Get used to painting quickly. In fact, if you want to get it on very quickly, use a nice big brush. There we are. Now I'll add a little bit of crimson. Not down too low, keep it up. We get this very pretty colour with the crimson up here. The Indian yellow and the crimson come together to give you a very pretty colour. And I have a little bit of white on the brush there too. All the colours at once. Make sure you cover all the canvas. And I'll use a bit more Indian yellow over here. I call it Indian yellow. You might be using another colour. It's the same colour, just different brands. There's a bit of a cloud there. 
Now because it's a sunset, don't emphasize the roundy, roundy clouds. Let's have this effect happening. Now my brush is dirty with one side the colors and the other side a little bit of white. If I put it on this side, nothing happened. But if I move it towards the white, you'll see the white will come off. Now without brushing too much, don't keep brushing and brushing until you've got nothing left. There's a big vacant spot. I'll put something in there. And we might have another little go at this, if we're lucky. Then I'll load my brush with a little bit of dark on one side and a light on the other. I'll try and get a cloud happening. I get a white spot about here. The Aboriginals are standing in the sunset there. Now I'm deliberately keeping away from here. Don't go back there. Once you get it nice and bright, don't go back over it. Here there's something missing. Let's have a little bit of bright here, just to take our picture out a bit more. Now we can finish off up the top. I've loaded my brush crimson and the Indian yellow, or the Australian sienna. And we'll finish off right across up the top there and block it in all up here. That's that area. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of cobalt blue, not dark enough. I'll go for the Prussian blue and get that very dark bit up in the corner. Keep painting up there. Don't come down there now. It's too late to come down now. And add some crimson. Don't put any more Indian yellow in here now or you might end up with a green. We don't want a greeny sky. We want it coming from the purpley black sky up above us into the, the golds and crimsons here. A bit more paint. I'll finish this corner off very dark. Now, that's how I finish my painting off. About like that. That's okay. When you put some detail in front of that, It'll look like a good sunset, but you can fiddle around with it a little bit, but not too much. Concentrate more on having it very bright. That's important. Very bright. I'll finish off here because there's a bit of paint missing, and a bit of paint missing here. I've cleaned my brush a little bit, and I've put some Indian yellow and white, and I'll attempt to put a cloud going up over this area here. I've got the dark Indian yellow on that side of the brush, and the white on the top. And if I brush it like this, I'll get the Indian yellow to come off. And here, the white comes off. There. Oh, not too much. Okay. And maybe just a little bit of a cloud happening here. Just to give it a bit of character. I've spoilt that bit of sky. There. Now I'm not going to touch it anymore. The water's about there. I deliberately picked up white on one side of my brush and dark on the other side and I'll brush it on. And I'll try now and get a brilliant white bit in the water about there. And that's it. No more. No fiddling around with the water. Clean my brush. And before the water dries, pull it down with some down brush strokes. Very lightly now. I want that white to stay there, very lightly. I'm going back to my smaller brush and fill the horizon in. You need a straight line right across here. This color needs to be crimson. All crimson, because the ground is red. I'll get a crimson line right across there because I need so much of it let's put some of it onto the painting there we are and brush it in ah that's a better crimson that's nice and soft brush it in that gives you an undercoat I'm painting in acrylics you might be painting in oils you can do the same thing in oils exactly the same thing I'm doing here except the Acrylics tend to dry a bit quicker. It's okay. I'm getting used to it. There's bit, bits of paint missing there. We're going over that with foliage now. Now this is possibly the only colour we mix. Some white 
and some blue. That's cobalt blue, so let's get a very pretty blue happening. We'll mix a very pretty blue. Oh yes, we need some crimson because we do need some darks to go with the light. So that's crimson and cobalt blue mixed together to give us a purpley colour. Just a little bit more blue. Crimson's very strong, so you need more blue than crimson. Now with my round hog bristle brush, we'll dirty it in this colour and flatten it and pick up. And there we have our hog bristle brush pulled to a chisel point with blue on one side and dark on the other. That's right in the middle of the painting and these little dabs are those little trees in the distance. They're little bushes. And in the desert, they seem to grow all the same distance apart. So you can have them very regimented, all the same distance apart, like that. I'll load the brush again. A few more. As they come towards you, they get bigger. But on the other side of the water, you wouldn't notice the difference in size. They'll all look very small. Now, now while I've got that dark that came off the bottom of the brush just where I wanted it, we can pick that up with a very clean brush. This isn't so clean, but it'll do. And just pull it down into the water to give us a little tiny reflection, not much. Now those long streaks, they're okay. We can turn them into little trees later. They're very good. Now load your knife with a little bit of dark. That's just on the edge of the knife. I've got a bit much on there, but it doesn't matter and give us a dark line along there. If it's broken, it's okay. We'll load the knife again, and we'll have a nice crispy dark line along there. And then clean your knife well, and pick up some white, and give yourself a white line directly under the dark line. This must be horizontal. Then we can have another one across that reflection of a tree there. Then with our brush loaded again with the two colours, we finish off our dab, dab, dabs. That one went a bit high, doesn't matter. Finish off our dab, dabs right to the edge of the picture. And cut them in over the water. See how they're getting bigger? I'm pushing harder, it's a bigger bush. Put them over the edge of the water. You see under the bush there, you see over the bush here. And here they're very big. And they've got a bit of distance between them. Getting bigger as they come towards us. Always have them curved into the picture as you go. And there's bigger spaces between them down here. Then we go across the bottom of the picture. Up over the water. And finish about there. Just a few big ones, right at our feet. Now we have the other side of the picture to finish off. I deliberately kept our horizon down low so we can take our rocks well up over the horizon, say like that, and slope them into the picture. Don't change the direction of your rock right on that bank. Change it in the middle of the water there and bring it down towards us. This makes it look more real like a piece of rock beside a water hole. And it also brings your eye into the picture. There. And clean your knife here. Clean your knife every time you pick up paint. Then we'll sculpture a rock there. Join this one up. Big rocks. That's the darker the rocks. And if you have any dark blue or purple paint, you can put it in there. Not along the top, but around the bottom of the rock. Now on my knife I have a little bit of burnt sienna. Make sure you place it right on the top of the rock and just pull it down like that. And bits of paint come off like that. Again. Just over the high bits of paint. So you don't need much burnt sienna, you just need a little bit. Use it pure and straight like that. And without cleaning your knife, pick up some white. And with that, Work in a little bit of white, very lightly, over the burnt sienna. Just a very little bit like that. Then clean my knife at the moment. Oh, that's mixing well there. There. Here. 
and bring it in like that and look like a walk up and where it's too bright rub it in we don't want it to look too higgly peely and between the rocks we can finish off with our dab 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 dark and blue on the brush and we can cover our mistakes with our dab dab brush stroke and anywhere where there's a bit of paint missing or your rocks don't look exactly like rocks not too much though and with your little round brush loaded with plenty of dark brown burnt umber or well, you can use Prussian blue if you wish. We'll place two Aboriginals. His head, his body curved, his leg up. His brother's up here, painting the head. Very straight body. He has one leg out with his foot on his knee, his arm there, and his other arm holding the spear. You see I'm holding my hand, give them a little bit of muscle. Then with your clean knife and a little bit of paint, you can place in the spears. Don't worry about the bottom of the spear here, we can fix that. Two spears. So that's our two Aboriginals in the sunset. Now with the same brush, we can paint in a tree behind them. Two fingers on the brush. Now we need to paint little trees in the background. Start on the side here in case you make a mistake. We can always fix it. We don't want to make mistakes in the middle of the picture. Bring some little trees up. Two fingers. Now because there's a reflection there, there should be a tree there. Just let the weight of the brush do it. Don't have a big tree here. That's our little trees. It is important to keep these trees little. And when your brush is working well, you can paint the birds in. This picture has a story. These guys are waiting for the birds. The birds will land near the water hole and then they'll get them and they'll have something to eat. You can leave them out if you wish. Now it'd be a good idea to balance our picture. We have a lot on this side and not much on that side. We have a lot of bushes on this side that look good. Maybe just one prominent tree just here. Let it come well up into the picture because it's close to you. And our branches crossing each other. And if you load your brush with light and dark, you can always twist your brush towards the light and get a white line to come off there too. Now I still have the yellow here and by adding just a little bit of Prussian blue, it should turn into a deep green. Oh, that's old paint. Deep green. Don't mix it completely. I'll put some Prussian blue then. Now I'm using my fan brush. We pick up dark and light And on the very top of the biggest tree, let's put a little bit of foliage. Just a little bit, not much, it's very sparse. 
like that. And because it's so dark, it'll stand out against the background. And because we're in the desert, I'll spread that tree out a little bit, make it more of a desert shaped tree. And I'll add a few more branches here. And to balance just a little bit in the distance here and there on a few trees. Now you can leave your painting like that or you can put some foliage here. Well, that's our sunset at the Billabong finished. I hope you enjoyed that.